Thank you for joining us today in the 10th lecture of the current topics in heritage science, which is organized within the Iberian HS Academy and the European Research Infrastructure for Heritage Science. My name is Tiasha Riavets and I'm a PhD student at the University of Ljubljana. I will be moderating today's lecture by Livio De Luca, titled Towards Cathedrals of Digital Data and Multidisciplinary Knowledge in Heritage Science. The recording of the lecture will be av available on the ERIS YouTube channel, and please use the Q&A function to ask questions already during the lecture, but the questions will be then answered uh, by the speaker at the end of the lecture. If you experience any technical difficulties, let us know through the chat. So our speaker today is Livio De Luca, and he's by professor, profession and education an architect with a PhD in engineering and a habilitation doctorate in computer science. He holds the position of a research director at CNRS and the director of models and simulation for Arch architecture and cultural heritage unit at the CNRS. Currently, his research activities focus on surveying, geometric modeling, and semantic enrichment of digital representation of heritage objects. Well, his expertise was recognized by, by many awards, just to name a few, by the Pierre Bézier Prize in 2007, by the Medal for Research and Technology in 2016, by the CNRS Medal of Innovation in 2019, by the Targa d'Oro in the 2021, and just last week by the insignia of Chevalier of the Order of Arts and Letters by France. And in 2019, he became the coordinator of the G Digital Data Working Group of the CNRS and the Ministry of Culture for the restoration of Notre Dame and received an ERC advanced grant in 2022. So Livio De Luca, thank you for being with us today and please share with us your perspective on this topic. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation. It's an honor to me to contribute to this very interesting initiative. So I will start by sharing my screen. It's okay. Perfect. Yes. It's perfect. So uh, thank you for the presentation, and uh, of course, I will talk today about uh, this ongoing research project. We start uh, since 2095, 19, <laughs> um, um, after the fire um, in Notre Dame. Um, as you will know, this fire um, was um, um, a new and important and painful page on the history of the cathedral. And, but the fire was also the beginning of um, um, a great scientific adventure uh, um, within uh, several challenges that um, the scientific community are facing today around the restoration of the cathedral. Uh, several challenges that transformed the restoration uh, work site into a site of global interdisciplinary electronic and heuristic studies concerning the recovering uh, of data and, and knowledge about the architectural elements uh, destroyed by the fire um, on the extraction of information contained in the, into the preserved materials, but also in, in the introduction of innovative methods for, um, for physical and chemical analysis of materials, or also for uh, modeling and simulation around the geometric, the structural, and the acoustic uh, spheres. And of course, beyond the, the materials, the elements, and the technical um, um, aspects of the cathedral, the capture and the analysis of uh, the common heritage that arouses the emotions within the society, um, uh, belonging to a more anthropological sphere, is also a very important issue um, um, faced by the scientific action. Uh, of course, uh, the restoration of the cathedral is a challenge, but it's also an opportunity because um, this restoration work site opens a moment, a privileged moment for observation in the study of materials and technical details never seen before on the cathedral. And um, particularly within the digital age, this project allow all of us to work with array past, present, and future dialectic. 
So these um, challenges and opportunities are at the heart of the National Scientific Society Notre Dame, led by the CNRS and the Ministry of Culture in France, that involves today more than 170 research staff coming from 50 research units and organized in nine working groups. The nine working groups um, concerns the, the materials such as wood, metal, stone, glass, decors, but also the structural and the acoustic behaviors, the heritage emotions, and a uh, cross-cutting um, um, working group that I lead on the digital data. And there are several aspects that concerns the, the, the overall structure of the scientific site, which are this uh, particular articulation between the restoration work site and the scientific work site that um, allow all of us to work in uh, by managing several temporalities, I mean the very short term um, decision um, um, and making a decision process within a new uh, the urgency of the site and the mid term or the long term um, of some uh, research approaches. But um, anyway, it's a it's a great occasion um, to work uh, together for, for um, make emerge some new ways for, for working in a collaborative way on the same object and to, to benefit of our collective endeavor. So if we insert uh, this project uh, within the general landscape of the digital transition in heritage science, um, I think this sentence uh, is very appropriate in order to, 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 to draw uh, our landscape. Um, it's time to introduce what might be called the digital humanism, in which archaeologists, anthropologists, architects, historians, uh, and so on, or side by side with chemists, physicists, and computer scientists to define a new semantics for understanding the complexity of reality. And this sentence uh, was pronounced during the first, the opening ceremony of the first G20 culture ministers meeting in 2021. And I think that it's very well with uh, the description of the situation in which um, we are today. The problem is not to agree or to uh, defend the sentence. I think everybody agree on this sentence. The real problem is to define ways for doing in an effective way this collaborative environment for research. And if we compare this sentence and this hope uh, uh, to this current state of the art in computational modeling and digitization, the cultural spheres, we, are, we have four major gaps. The first is a semantic gap because we made a lot of advances in digitization. So we are able to do to produce a massive product, digital, in massively some digital resources of cultural, on cultural objects. The problem is that we are not able to manage in a massive way the interpretation of the acquired data. So first question is how to move from the massive production of raw data to the massive production of semantically enriched data. Then we have a memory gap because we made a lot of advances in uh, knowledge engineering for aggregating, interconnecting, and, and export heterogeneous data. But beyond the approaches based on uh, metadata, paradata, and ontologies, the question is today how to consider the subjective human decisions and uh, to describe, to memorize some research protocols that are based on some sometimes in very highly underdeveloped skills. Then we have a data correlation gap because we are able today to aggregating um, data, uh, metadata, and multi thematic observations, such as um, um, annotations, for example, on the multimedia resources within multi dimensional representation. But uh, we probably need today some autonomous, semi automatic, or automatic mechanism able for. To, to correlate the data between these dimensions and this is the, between these points of view, so observations. And then uh, we have also um, an important technological gap. Well, if we are able today from a technical point of view to manage text, images, sounds, videos, and 3D representation uh, with also within web environments, the real problem is how to link the collaborative data production to what we can consider 
um, has a sustainable balance between the, the human analysis and the computational support. So uh, if we look at, at these four major gaps um, within the sphere of the collaborative research, and especially concerning the cultural heritage, we can easily um, understand that the, in this specific um, field, the confrontation between a real object and the multidisciplinary studies is probably the arena of the co-production of collective knowledge. So the question today is how to memorize these bundles of individual gazes converging on the same objects um, from a conceptual point of view, but also from a, from a technical point of view, and how to analyze the, their dynamics of overlap and of the co-construction co leading to this new knowledge. By using a, a quotation from um, Bruno Latour, uh, the problem is how to study the way in which each discipline is coming from its own territory is confronted with the, the test that crosses whole discipline. And for us, working on the restoration of Notre Dame is a, um, a very relevant uh, experimentation field for doing that. So we would like to build a new field of study, like a territory of multidisciplinary, multidimensional digital data to be used as raw material for the study of the mechanism of knowledge production in heritage science. Uh, that means to experiment with uh, the construction of a digital ecosystem, so a, a distributed, adaptable, and open social technical system and I, I, I would like to insist on this point, it's a social and technical and not only technical system that includes on one side, um, on, on, on one hand, um, an evolving representation of the material object, uh, like what we consider today as a, a digital twin, and the structured representation of the knowledge built around this object. Uh, like the app, which is developed uh, several years ago in the geographic of scientific knowledge, for example. So that's it. We would like to link the physical features of an heritage object with what we can consider the digital representation of the collective knowledge we build around. And for doing that, first of all, would you like to introduce methods for memorizing the pathways from the scientific questions to the production of data and then to the interpretation of this data and the production of new knowledge. So let's the, the flow from the left, for example, we imagine a group of architects, historians of art and uh, engineers and um, and um, uh, working on the, on the, the reconstruction of, of an arch in the cathedral, and they start from the collection of some elements um, for composing a corpus of brochures able to 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 recompose in a in a digital or physical way the destroyed arch. Then the study of their morphological features, the digital modeling of the composition, the assembling of the original arc, and then the, the assessment uh, within the physical world of the result of this study. So uh, imagine now to, to, to have this chain of activity represented in a digital way and able to, to, able to connect all the data produced uh, during the study. So we would like to introduce methods for memorizing a lot of um, research process within the cathedral in order to analyze the relationships between the material objects, their features, and the objects of knowledge. So let's imagine, for example, the, the link between um, a digital representation of beam um, within the, the study of the mechanical behavior of a frame, and then the link to um, 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 representation of an historic um, document used for for uh, recovering knowledge about the previous state of the cathedral, linked to a spatial area uh, within the global topographical reference of the cathedral, and linked to several temporal states of the, the same spatial area, able to, 
to, to run from the, the state before fire and after the fire, and then within the after the fire, fire stay, state, um, uh, other links to elements representing the remains today studied by, by scholars for material provenance or for the, the, the classification on elements. So uh, in, in by the approach we are building, we um, should be able to um, unveil uh, thousands of these uh, overlapping regions of interest between different studies carried out on the cathedral by using the form, the space, the time, and the knowledge domain as pivots. So for doing that, we collected since uh, 2019 a lot of data uh, thanks to the support of the French Ministry of Culture, also the CNRS, coming from uh, cultural institutions, research laboratories, and also private companies on the state of the cathedral before the fire, during the, the, the fire, and during, the most important, during the, the remains removal, the identification, the first inventory, and the temporar temporary storage of this element. And of course, we are continuously con collecting new data coming from the scientific study of the remains uh, and belonging to um, all the uh, working groups involved in the into the scientific action. And since the beginning of the project, um, together with um, some associated partners, so we are more than um, twelve laboratories. Um, working in, uh, in uh, our digital, um, our, um, our working group, we uh, decided to make a federated um, uh, initiative in bringing together existing tools already operational and able to manage what we can consider as the, the data life cycle related to the specific needs of the projects. And this uh, ecosystem today counts six tools with another that is, uh, is uh, joining. Um, Esmeralda um, is, a, is a tool, specific tool for uh, the ingestion, the data ingestion. ArcuGrid for the data indexing and categorization. OpenTSO for the management of controlled vocabularies. Uh, IOLI for the 2D and 3D semantic annotation. 3D up for the interactive analysis of 3D objects and uh, a special viewer we are developing for the multimodal analysis of 4D scene. And, um, um, and the last tool called Memoria that I will present just at the end within the perspective. All the software comes from, come from labs, laboratory or public laboratories is open and reusable. So uh, they, they use in an integrated way uh, is fostering us uh, within the, the ways of interoperability uh, and uh, probably also within, uh, towards the emergence of self, something that we can consider as a standard of us, as I mean, a standard for our specific um, needs. And of course, this software is fully based on web technologies. So the methodology we set up for the project is based on two main phases. The first phase starting just a few months after the, the fire in 2019 and will end at the end of the scientific action in 2024. And this is um, a phase concentrated on the um, um, data production. So we are covering all the steps, starting from the data structuring to the knowledge models by introducing uh, specific methods for the semantic enrichment and by taking into account uh, the production of on-site and in-lab data, the spatial, their sp spatial temporal location, their um, annotation uh, by, by considering multiple layers uh, related to the disciplinary fields involved in the study. And of course, the more abstract um, question of uh, the memorizing the path uh, from the data to their interpretation. And the, the uh, aim, the main aim of the, this integration is to, to think and to anticipate uh, what we call the n-dimensional correlation that um, 
um, I will show with some examples. Then we will start in 2025 up to 2027, uh, the uh, more high risk and exploratory research on uh, data analysis, which starting by the results of this uh, and dimensional correlation, uh, we will uh, try to unveil and to explore the links between the features belonging to the material objects and uh, the features and uh, the car the the um, the um, um, facets related to uh, the more abstract dimension of the the human um, contribution and um, by scientific activities and by you know, what we consider as the initial skills involved in this project that I remember involved today more than. 170 um, um, researchers. So we will try in the, the, in the next years to explore the relationship between uh, the material objects or the features belonging to the material objects with the objects of knowledge. So in order to provide you with a, a, a good position between you know, the utopia and the, uh, the real life of a researcher, uh, I will uh, present some case studies uh, within the, the project and the problems we faced uh, during uh, these last years. Um, so we uh, worked together with all um, the thematic work, working groups uh, on uh, some emergency and diagnostic um, um, phases concerning the, um, the analysis of temporal states or the condition report. Uh, but also uh, on the reconstruction, um, on the reconstruction of the, the data and the knowledge related to the previous state of the cathedral, uh, especially concerning the forest, the timber roof, and the collapsed belts. And of course, we are continuously uh, working now on uh, some uh, studies belonging to the different thematic groups um, that you can uh, see on which you can see on the right. So I will start with the first case study on uh, the um, reality-based 3D annotation of the state of the cathedral of the disaster. Just an important point before, uh, in order to, to remember some of our past works, we, we introduced, uh, starting by 2014, a reality-based 3D annotation platform for the collaborative annotation documentation. It's called IULI. This platform allows users to, to just to annotate simple images, and then um, the platform compute the 3D spatial orientation of each image, and then allow users to propagate in an automatic way the annotations between images and uh, to qualify this annotation with uh, descriptors. Uh, so here you can see the work we made because uh, we used um, Ayuli for the first time within this um, project in a real scale uh, case study. So here you can see the project when it's open. The project uh, allowed to insert users and to share content between users. And here you can see the results made by the platform of the 3D uh, orientation of the imaging, uh, images and also the generation of a point cloud by a photogrammetric approach. And then each image can be uh, annotated by this way. And this uh, annotation can be qualified and automatically distributed on uh, several images. And each uh, annotation layer can be um, um, structured according to several and custom um, um, description fields that the user can compose. And as you can imagine, for the condition report, it was very important to, to define a, a rigid and rigorous structure of description, your description of a panel. And by accumulating layers of description and groups of description, here you can see that all the annotations are directly distributed into a 3D um, way. So here you can see the overall a structure of our database after two years of work. So um, all the 
yeah, yeah, more than um, 250 projects containing hundreds of photographs per project that are generated and by following uh, um, a structure of data layers and group um, um, that contains uh, specialized annotations and that describe within a unique topographical framework all the observation made on the surfaces. Um, the data comes from, come from um, first of all, the maîtrise d'oeuvre, which are the architects in charge of the restoration of the cathedral. And then uh, the data are also enriched by um, uh, data and annotation coming from the research laboratories on materials such as LVMASH or LERM on the behaviors, uh, structural behaviors. But in other uh, important annotation are coming um, in the in this last year from the the um, thematic working groups on the decors on uh, wood and on uh, metal and as you can see um, all the annotation or we we count today more than nine thousand um, annotation are structured belonging. Um, 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 a rigorous structure um, of uh, layers and description. And uh, for this um, project, we built um, um, an interlink between the IOLI platform and OpenTESO um, in order to manage controlled vocabularies, especially concerning the general reference uh, on the special, special location of the project and the condition report categories, and also by, um, by exploiting the links with uh, existing specialized Zauri on the architecture, degradation phenomena, and the restoration techniques. So in this case study, we uh, uh, explored the relationship between uh, the space, the forms, and the words. First of all, a good links between the 3D specialization of the data belonging to specific areas of the cathedral and uh, also the, their related forms, but also a very interesting link between the forms and the words that are used for annotating them for explaining um, uh, the way in which the, the, um, this um, um, sub-region or uh, surface region acts within the general purpose of the, um, the condition report analysis. So the second case study is about the reconstruction of the collapsed vaults. Here you can see the images after the fire and the element we taken into account for the you know, reconstruction because it was very important to to understand the geometrical layout of the arch in order to rebuild um, a good with a good method the um, the uh, the ribstone composition and then the these are two pictures able to to illustrate um, this particular uh, temporal um, confrontation that we made between the original element and the remains. So for doing that, we extended our specially, uh, special um, 3D annotation approach to, to 4D uh, because we, we uh, recovered um, thousands of pictures uh, taken by, by um, stakeholders within the days of the remains removal. And then we organized this information around some temporal clusters. And then we used our approach for the 2D, 3D annotation in order to identify relevant elements, some loose words that you can see here. And then we managed the automatic propagation of this annotation on all the images belonging to the same temporal slot. And then we extend this approach by using the special boundaries of the, of the annotated object to other temporal slots in order to verify the presence of the element during a temporal range taken into account. And this allowed us to not only to identify the foul position 
of the elements, as you can see on the images, but also the uh, temporal slot for um, looking within the temporary storage um, um, elements. Then we move to the uh, uh, 3D digitization of the remains. And as you can see here, here on the image, we, we extended our approach for documentation to the, the initial dimension of the digitization device because we, we developed a specific, a dedicated device for, uh, for these uh, elements in order to, to collect in a very precise way with a um, harmonious and rigorous framework, uh, the geometry and the visual uh, feature of each element. And of course, in a big way, because each acquisition um, has a duration of less, less than 10 minutes. And the amount of this um, data collected allowed us to um, um, rebuild the, the history of um, all the documents uh, belonging to this um, removals op uh, remain removals operation uh, by establishing a continuous link uh, between all the documents and, and especially um, regarding the pictures um, um, concerning the vultures. And uh, by using ArcuGrid, we were able also to introduce special features for um, link this um, path uh, that able to to recover the whole the data belonging to a booster starting from a, um, a QR code. And within this um, action, we also uh, improved the interoperability with the controlled vocabularies as open test. So here, here you can see the integration of all the data that um, coming from the digitization, coming also from the analysis carried on by uh, archaeologists uh, in particular, that we uh, merged into um, a physical digital anastylosis. And this was a very, very interesting experience because we, we really understood that um, by using some conceptual pivots, such as, you know, the, the um, the, the key uh, feature of the archaeological reasoning about the, the positioning of some um, no elements, the position and the presence of some uh, uh, specific technical details, uh, but also the computed data information on the approximated default location, we were able to to, to build up an approach between two spheres, so the, the physical um, uh, experience and the digital one uh, that uh, are today considered as uh, merged into a unique uh, physical digital experience that allow us to, to rebuild this uh, arch. And we extended this approach also to another important element, the Oculus, the crossing, and here you can see just in one image, the contribution of this work from the scientific work side to the restoration side on the right, some picture um, um, taken last February on the restoration side with the Oculus already rebuilt. So this experience allowed us to uh, establish and to explore a very strong um, link between the space-time description of the, the, the data, as explained before, the, the tracking of boosters within the image corpuses, but also an interesting starting point for um, establishing links to be exploited within the, the general semantic enrichment of elements between the forms and the annotation of technical details of form and the relationship with the formalized knowledge uh, on the hypothetical state. I will finish with the third case study on the forest. Here you can see some pictures on the interior state, state of the forest. Here are some pictures 
on the state after the fire and the conditions, very complex condition for recovering this material for storing. And uh, here, just a few examples of importance of recovering, studying, and uh, developing uh, knowledge on these remains. And uh, it's important because um, it was um, essential to us to continue documenting all the process of study by starting from the recovery. So in this case, we developed a um, another dedicated acquisition device built um, on uh, by using uh, several um, cameras mounted on a cable cam um, in, a, in in order to to monitor the um, uh, removals operation in order to produce a four dimensional cartography of these elements and to assist the annotation phase it was really important in order to um, um, conduct the hypothetical reconstruction phase by coupling on one side the, the reality-based representation of the remains with the hypothetical um, reconstruction of the um, anterior state of the, of the forest starting by documentary sources. Um, we used um, pictures, more than uh, 3,000 pictures, uh, of the forest, coupled with um, section technical uh, drawings and also some uh, point clouds. And that um, allowed us to work in a um, particular condition that we experimented by uh, coupling the IOLI software with the viewer uh, NDP that allowed us to work within um, diachronic scenes. I, I mean, within scenes that we're able to 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 merge two temporal st states um, and first of all in order to specialize documentary sources here you can see the for example one photograph uh, that we were able to 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 position within the hypothetical reconstruction um, by using uh, um, the viewer and also in order to um, to uh, reposition the um, um, uh, remains, which are also digitized um, within this um, structure that merge the conditions of the cathedral after the fire and the hypothetical reconstruction of the, the, the frames before fire. So um, this was a very interesting experience because um, allowed us to establish um, um, a permanent link uh, between uh, some conceptual reference that we established for describing the entire structure. And here you can see the what we can consider the final result we provided to the architects. This is a structured models, uh, structured according to um, the archaeological analysis. You can see here also the, the typologies, uh, we uh, used for uh, reconstruct the, the model and uh, the model is not considered like um, an, a final result but is um, as an ongoing and evolving uh, representation and here in red for example you can see the element for which the material analysis by dendrochronology is available today and on the right the last picture on the 1st of June uh, from the work, restoration work site. So this case study was very important for us in order to explore this important link between the data provenance and um, its and, and the, the spatial referencing of um, this um, data on the, on the example I show you but also a um, very interesting um, relationship that we are formalizing again today between the temporal states of um, the forms uh, related to the temporal um, um, conditions um, before and after the fire. And um, that um, allow us to identify some um, references that we can use for uh, accessing to both data concerning the restitution, the, the hypothetical reconstruction and the, the ongoing and future analysis of material. So if I can have 
two minutes, I will finish with the ongoing, that's okay, ongoing um, works. Um, so we are today at the end of uh, our contribution for the restoration work set. As you already saw, um, the restoration is uh, running, the reconstruction of the element is running today on the work site. So we are working on uh, um, exploring the relationship between the knowledge models and the data structuring in uh, two directions. First, from the knowledge models to the data. So we are starting using an information an informative system for memorizing research protocols, which is called the Memoria, is, a, is, a, is an application developed in my laboratory by Ivona Dudek. And this application um, allowed to describe research protocols without thinking about data. So, I mean, we are today really focusing on the way in which the um, scientists can describe their scientific protocols by using a collection of activities that they will be also able to define. And then we think of the link between these activities and the data. And by this way, for example, if we take into account uh, the process for the analysis of a, uh, of a leap year, for example, and uh, all the process for the, the, the scientific analysis, we are today able to express each uh, specific activity belonging to this research by using uh, um, a data provenance model. But at the same time, we are looking at how to express the location of this item in spatiotemporal semantics. I mean, in, um, in several structured um, in words or concepts that are able to, to be mapped um, with a geometrical representation of their uh, location. And uh, we are also exploring the relationship between data and knowledge in the other sense. I mean that we, we are using the more than uh, 9,000 annotations I showed before, collected around the condition report of the cathedral, uh, in order to extract uh, from by a bottom-up approach um, some uh, occurrence able to define a specific um, semantic environment as we can consider as a starting point for expressing the point of view of the specific action on the object. So as we established um, a very um, strong relationship between the 3D localization of annotations and their reciproc 2D, 3D, relationship, as you can see, we can transfer all the attributes related, linked to the annotation to the initial images. And by this way, we, we are also starting to, uh, to introduce some innovative mechanism for the automatic classification of photographs by considering the spatial uh, proximity, the temporal proximity, but of course the semantic proximity by using the collections of words uh, used and extracted by the annot uh, from the annotations. Here, my last two slides on this approach in order to highlight the amount of data and in terms of 2D representations, 3D related representations and words that we are able to store within one unique image. And on the right, the process we are um, setting up um, in order to, 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 uh, to, to explore the links between the material um, objects and the way in which several layers can describe the same um, um, surface. And I finish with this slide uh, on the um, first experiments with the deep learning, uh, on where we are um, combining some uh, um, segmentation uh, approaches with um, um, the, some labeling approaches by using 
um, the images as a, as a inputs and uh, the uh, collected the vocabulary terms uh, as a domain um, to be uh, recognized. I finished with this slide, uh, just for underlining that I presented uh, this work, but this is a very collective uh, adventure and uh, these are all the colleagues involved. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much for the great, great presentation on a, I think, especially complex topic like this. Um, let's give the audience a few moments to write down their questions and uh, we'll answer them shortly. Um, I would like you to please share the screen to the last slide. Yeah. I forget, sorry. Yeah. Oh, Perfect. sorry. So um, I wanted to take this opportunity and I'm speaking on behalf of the whole organization team that was involved in uh, preparing this uh, lecture series. And we would like to thank all of our excellent speakers that have participated in this first edition of the lecture series. I think it was a year that was full of very exciting and diverse topics. It ranged from various uh, fundamental aspects of the techniques and the methodologies that you may encounter uh, working as heritage scientists. Uh, there was also a lot of technical discussion, very many to topical details, and also the ethical aspects of, of it all, basically. So we, wa we wanted also to thank you, the audience, for giving us the opportunity to um, present uh, these topics in a bit of a different way, and we appreciate your feedback. Um, so. Without further ado, we would also like to announce that the series will continue uh, next year, um, starting in the autumn. Um, so we look forward to seeing and hearing from you again.